Do tests make you sweat? They don't have to. In this video, you'll learn proven strategies for analyzing and correctly answering multiple choice questions. To a lot of people, taking the CTS exam test presents a big barrier to getting certified. How can your performance on the test reflect how good you are at your job? After all, you don't go to job sites and take exams or answer multiple choice questions during client interviews. The truth is that a well-written test should never come between you and a credential you deserve. The knowledge and strategies you're about to learn can't guarantee that you'll pass a test. They can take the stress out of testing, though, so you can concentrate on showing what you know. Let's spend some time examining the kinds of questions you'll be facing. The purpose of a multiple choice test is to determine if you've met a set of learning objectives. In the case of the CTS exams, these objectives are listed in the exam content outlines. Each question on the test should assess your mastery of one and only one of these objectives. Let's take a look at the parts of a multiple choice question. Multiple choice questions have three parts. The stem, the problem or question presented. The stem should test you on one objective, that is, one piece of knowledge or one skill. The question should be clearly stated in the stem. If you've mastered the objective being tested, you should be able to come up with an answer to the stem without looking at anything else. The correct answer, this is the best solution. Again, if you've mastered the objective being tested, you may be able to predict this before you even see it. And the distractors, plausible wrong answers. It's important to understand that the distractors aren't actually there to trick or mislead you. Rather, distractors are there to weed out those who've mastered the objective from those who haven't. Look at the example here. This question asks, what causes day and night to occur? The second option, the Earth moves around the sun, might look very plausible to some people. This distractor weeds out people who only understand that night and day have something to do with the Earth's movement. To those who truly understand that they're based on Earth's rotation, this distractor is clearly wrong. So. All the information you need to answer a well-written question should be in the STEM. Don't be distracted by those distractors. Focus on the question being asked. Did you notice me refer to the correct answer as the best solution and inwardly groan? Why do test writers do this? Well, given enough time and flashcards, anyone can memorize enough facts to pass an exam whose questions all have only one correct answer. For a credential to actually mean something, the associated test has to show that you know how to make the best decision out of a number of decent options, or the least bad decision out of a number of so-so options. A systematic approach to reading test questions will help you identify the answer. There will be enough information in the question stem to indicate that correct answer. If you're not careful, though, the information in the distractors will, well, distract you. You might start thinking about the plausible alternatives they present instead of just thinking about the information in the stem. Let's look at an example. This and all remaining multiple choice questions are drawn from one of the CTS practice exams. In the program phase, what must be determined to assure that a functional system scope will be created? A. Concerns about what technology will be available for the application. B. The specific functions, tasks, and applications of the presenter. C. Considerations regarding access to loading dock facilities. Or D. The goals of equipment supplier sales representatives. Do you see more than one correct answer here? This is one of those choose the best answer questions. All the answer choices describe information that you're going to have to discover at some point during the AV project. If you put your focus on the possible answer choices first, pretty soon you're way overthinking all the possible answers and no longer really thinking about the question at all. This is why it's best to cover the answers and read the question by itself first. All the information that you need to answer the question is here. If you need to make a lot of assumptions or make a logical leap to topics that aren't mentioned in the stem to make an answer choice work, that answer choice is probably wrong. Now that you're looking at the question itself, think carefully about what it's actually asking. Identify the key terms that indicate what kind of solution the stem is looking for. Remember, the stem shouldn't include a lot of junk information intended to trick you. Think about why the information it does include is important. This question indicates a specific phase of the project the program phase. From that key term, you know that the question is likely to be about the needs discovery process. The question then asks about how a functional system scope is created. First, ask yourself, what is a functional system scope? The functional scope describes what the AV systems will do. With that in mind, before you look at the answers, visualize what you expect the answer to be. How do you figure out what users need an AV system to do? Pause now to choose an answer. The correct answer is B, the specific functions, tasks, and applications of the presenter. Let's take a look at another example question. This one comes from the official CTSD practice exam. First, we'll look at the question by itself. 
the first step when determining conduit capacity for cable should be to determine the blank. Look at the keywords. What is this question asking you for? This question is asking you for the first step to determine conduit capacity. The answer options may list other important steps in this process or other considerations relating to pulling cable, but you shouldn't care. Okay, let's look at your answer options. Pause now to choose an answer. The correct answer in this case is B, allowable fill percentage based on local codes. Did you see the answer you were expecting among the answer choices? Hopefully most of the time you will, but you might have expected to see number of cables among the answer choices because you often need to know how many cables you're pulling in order to determine the allowable fill percentage. Since it wasn't there, you have to go with the best answer choice among what's listed. What do you do when the answer you expect isn't there or more than one option looks like what you had in mind? How do you find the best answer? First, look for the answer you expected. Make a mental note of any answers that fit or partially fit what you expected the correct answer to be. Next, eliminate the obvious distractors. You'll probably be able to immediately strike at least one option, often two. Finally, compare your choice to the remaining answers. Does the one you liked originally really fit the best? Is there another option that better addresses the problem addressed in the stem? Let's try applying this strategy by looking at a couple of examples. Remember to scrutinize the stem first, looking for key terms, before looking at the answer choices. Here's a question from the CTSI practice exam. As you visually inspect RF signal cable and compare what you see on the diagrams to what is seen in the rack, what are you looking for? You're looking for an answer that discusses something you can see while inspecting cable. You can therefore eliminate any answer that doesn't relate directly to cables or can't be detected by a visual inspection. B and D. You can't visually inspect the signal level of a cable. And as for D, the question asks about cables, not displays. Now look to see if one of the remaining choices matches the answer you expected to find. Compare your choice to the other remaining option. Which one best describes something you can see when you inspect RF cables? Pause now to select your answer. The correct answer here is C, proper organization with correct bend radius. Here's another question from the CTS practice exam. Read the stem first, then analyze the answers. Pause now to select your answer. The correct answer here is A, connect display devices to a test signal generator, calibrate at points along the path. All these tips will be very helpful to you if you've mastered the objective. That is, if you know the information you're being tested on. What if you just draw a blank though? What should you do? Your brain often contains knowledge that you can almost but not quite access. Psychologists actually call this condition a tip of the tongue state, or TOT state, and you can use it to help you answer multiple choice questions. People in a tip of the tongue state may not be able to recall a specific word, but they can often recall the first letter of the word or the number of syllables. If you can't recall a specific term, try to recall what the word looks like or sounds like. You may be able to jog your memory, or at least produce a feeling that a certain answer is right. Trust this feeling. It may be your subconscious giving you a hint. Let's look at a recall question you could potentially use a TOT state to help answer. When terminating an Ethernet cable, what connector type is normally used? D-sub, RJ11, RJ45, or XLR? Even if you didn't remember the exact term for this connector, you might remember that it started with an R. That TOT state would eliminate two of the distractors, giving you a 50-50 shot. The correct answer, by the way, is C, RJ45. What should you do if after eliminating the distractors, looking for plausible correct answers, and even using a TOT state to try to choose the correct answer, you still don't feel sure about your response? Should you change your response or not? It may seem like changing an answer is always a bad idea, but that's probably just because when it goes wrong, we kick ourselves for it really hard. Actually, it's likely to be the right move. Studies have shown that people who change the answers they're unsure about improve their performance on multiple choice tests. In fact, one such study indicates that changed answers go from wrong to right over 50% of the time, and right to wrong only 23% of the time. So over a quarter of the time, you're no worse off than before, and over half the time, you're changing to the right answer. If your instincts are telling you the answer you've chosen is wrong, you may want to listen to them. The CTS exams give you the option of flagging questions you feel unsure about and returning to them at the end of the exam. Take advantage of this feature and use it to change the answers you don't think are right. Okay, let's review. A question is made up of three parts, the stem, the correct answer, and the distractors. 
Remember, the distractors aren't there to trick you. Don't take them into account when answering the question. Instead, focus on the stem. With every question, follow this strategy. Scrutinize the stem. Look at the question by itself first, covering the answers, and identify key terms. Analyze the answers. Look for the answer you expected, eliminate distractors, and compare your choice to alternatives. And guess with finesse. Use TOT states to your advantage and don't be afraid to change your mind. Now it's your turn. Try applying these strategies to practice problems. Thanks for watching.